Today on You Asked, sound bars versus AV receiver and speakers. Will I ever review laser TV slash UST projectors? Why can't TVs just come without speakers? Are 8K 120 Hertz TVs ever gonna be a thing? And why do I hate car audio so much? Welcome back everyone, I'm Caleb Dennison and this is You Asked, the show where I answer viewer and reader questions because you asked, and I have answers that I'd like to share with you and others who might have the same questions. And by the way, folks, if I'm gonna continue making these You Asked videos, I gotta see some support. So goose this video with some likes, would you? Let's get those views up so I can keep them coming. Really appreciate your help with that. Okay, we'll start with a question I've seen asked a lot, especially in the past couple of years. This one comes from at Marco Posevich who writes, Soundbar versus AV receiver. Given that nowadays there are so many soundbar options, some of which offer virtual surround sound, while others go as far as to feature dedicated satellite channels, at what point do you draw the line and opt for a true AV receiver? And what would be the pros and cons for either solution? So that's a big question and that deserves a big answer. So I will be making a full video for this one eventually, but let me give an overview of what that video will look like here. I know I'm stating the obvious here, but when it comes to home entertainment, everyone's needs and wants are different. But I think there are always three overarching considerations at play, cost, convenience, and practicality. An AV receiver and speakers can offer some advantages that I'll get into shortly, but they tend to pose challenges in all three of those departments, cost, convenience, and practicality. They can be tricky to set up for folks who don't have much experience with them. They often involve a lot of wires and cables, and they tend to be fairly bulky. So from a practical standpoint, maybe they take up too much space or someone else in the home is just gonna veto any attempt at putting a bunch of speakers and wires around a room. My point is, sometimes you just can't do a receiver and speakers. That's where soundbar systems come in. The soundbar tends to be the hub, audio signals are delivered wirelessly, amplification is built in at the speaker level, and they are just generally easier to deal with and easier to get past the decor deputy in your home. But that convenience and practicality offered by a soundbar-based system often comes at a cost of its own. That is, more of the money you're spending goes into the convenience and practicality aspects than it does the quality of the components. I would say that if the convenience and practicality of the audio system is not so much a concern, you're almost always gonna be able to build a better sounding and more capable system out of an AV receiver and speakers. That is, unless you're using a really inexpensive receiver and really inexpensive speakers, uh, the kind that comes in one box, actually. Home theater box with both receiver and speakers, generally not great. In those cases, you may be paying less than you would for a soundbar system that maybe costs more, but also sounds better. The thing is, there isn't like a clear intersection. I'd have to have specific examples of a soundbar system and an AV receiver and speakers to say which one might sound and or function better than the other. At Soren Vitarelli has a trifecta of questions, actually. The first is, how well does a nice soundbar actually compete against a similarly priced speaker system? Similar. Um, I kind of just answered that one, see above. Number two is, is a WISA speaker setup a good alternative to wired speakers with a receiver? Well, yeah, I mean, I think it's a good alternative. It can be, it depends on the quality of the WISA speakers, I guess. I'd say that if the speaker quality was equal between the WISA option and the regular option, uh, which you could find with clips, for example, then it would take a very expensive set of electronics on the passive speakers to best the WISA system. And third, are you ever going to review laser TV slash UST projectors? A, I have before, and I will be doing more of them going forward. Hisense has one on the way to me right now, as a matter of fact, so stay tuned, it's coming soon. At Refumo asks, why won't TV manufacturers give us the option to buy TVs without speakers? Same TV, just without speakers for those of us who prefer investing in audio systems. Well, the answer to that one is pretty simple. They won't do it because it is complicated and it costs a lot of money and it's not gonna really make them any of that money back. Look, I know it seems like a simple thing to do, right? Just leave out the speakers and the amplifier, yeah? But it isn't that simple. If they were to do this, they would have to create a new SKU for however many models they chose to offer without speakers, which in and of itself is a difficult decision to make. But adding new SKUs, 
That right there comes with all kinds of complications and expenses. It's, logistics are involved and, and marketing and ugh, what a mess. Also, it wouldn't be called a TV anymore. It would have to be called a monitor because a TV has to have speakers, just like a TV has to have a tuner. Otherwise, you can't call it a TV. Just ask Vizio about that. Uh, looks like we have another trifecta question. You guys like to pack them in there, don't you? At Devin Drayson, I8572, yes, says, hey, Caleb, doing great. Am I though? <laughs> I, I appreciate it, thank you. Or did you mean that you're doing great? Anyway, they asked, is there any chance like 4K 240 hertz or 8K 120 hertz TVs are coming in the near future? I mean, there's always a chance, but I'd say that chance is slim to none unless you count four to five years as being in the near future. And by the way, I'm doubtful of that because, well, next question is, HDMI with more speed like 96 gigabits per second or something like this coming or any news about it? Um, I have not heard anything about doubling the available bandwidth of the current HDMI spec. And considering how long it took us to get from 18 gigabits per second to 48 gigabits per second, I'm not optimistic it would be anytime soon. I'd love to be proved wrong though. Also, I think it would be better to ditch cables entirely and go wireless if we wanna add more bandwidth. Seems like the right thing to do. And if we did that, I'm not sure how much HDMI would actually have to do with it. Anyway, current bandwidth constrictions are why I don't think we'll see 8K 120 or 4K 240 hertz in TVs anytime soon, if at all. And then finally, the third question, is there any native 10-bit TVs out there or all come like 8-bit with FRC? Yes, there are many TVs with native 10-bit panels, too many to mention actually, but like going back a few years, the LG CX and C1 had native 10-bit panels, uh, so did their replacements. Um, they did not use 8-bit plus FRC. Man, we are really cruising along. I think we have time for one more maybe. Uh, at BR7Fan71 asks, why do you guys neglect the mid-range TVs? I'd like to see the A80L and the C3. I believe that these need just as much attention as the flagships because of the price difference. So, I think maybe you're new to the channel, in which case, welcome. I'm super glad you're here. Uh, I say that because I don't neglect mid-range TVs. Look back and you'll see I always review the A80 series from Sony and the C series from LG. I always have. Also, I don't consider those to be mid-range TVs, actually. I consider like the TCL Q7 or the Hisense U7K uh, mid-range TVs, but the point is I don't neglect them. Now, if you had asked why I don't prioritize them, well, there are a number of reasons why I might review the LG G3 before the LG C3, for example. One reason is because the majority of viewers I've asked have either directly or indirectly voted for me to do the fancier TV first. I've asked directly and been told by more people to do the G series first. But also, in the past, I got way more views on the G series than the C series, which is kind of a passive vote with viewership that indicates higher interest in the flagship TVs. With all of that said, I cannot believe that it has taken me this long to get a C3. I'm actually very frustrated about that. Same with the A80L. I expect both of them to be here within two weeks, possibly less. So those are definitely coming and I so appreciate your patience. All right, I think that, you know what? I'm gonna do one more, I just can't help myself. Uh, at Smig95 asks, have you ever thought of reviewing car stereo systems? I would be curious to have your opinion on an array of manufacturer offerings. So I actually have in the past. I've done a few Pioneer systems, though to be honest, those were mostly CarPlay and Android Auto inspired. Uh, so a while back ago actually, but I love car audio. I love it. I don't know how many I could actually do in a year, but I will say I would love it if some brands reached out. Also, I'd be down to test the fancy stock systems in some really nice cars. Those made with Levinson or B&W or Focal speakers or Macintosh amps. Uh, did you guys see the new Lotus EV? It's got some amazing looking KEF speakers in it. Check out MKBHD's Autofocus channel to see more of those. I was actually surprised Marquez hadn't heard of KEF before. I mean, I'd be happy to offer my commentary, should he want it. Anyway, I'm ridiculously busy, but I love car audio so much that I'd figure out how to make time if the right folks were to approach me. So 
Anyway, that's all for real this time, everyone. Thank you so much for watching. Please consider liking and subscribing to support our channel. I'll see you on the next one. And until then, here's two other videos I think you might like.